Never give up. Never surrender. Yo, it's me, it's me, it's the SCOTT, and I'm here to give you my review of the 1999 film Galaxy Quest, starring Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, and is directed by Dean Parasol. When a group of early 80s TV stars at a convention uh, are approached by an alien species to save their planet, Jason Nesmith goes alone because he thinks it's a gig, and sure, sure find, sir, soon finds out that it's more than just real. And eventually the whole group goes along. So, okay, so, you know, you got good actors in this. You got Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, uh, Alan Rickman, um, Sam Rockwell, Tony Shalhoub, uh, Enrico Colantoni, if you know him from, like, things, is like, Just Shoot Me and stuff like that, you know? You even have Rain Wilson, uh, and Missy Pyle, and I think this was one of her first roles in this film, and one thing I want to say is that almost every one of the main characters goes through some kind of journey with Jason Nesmith. It's going from being this drunk guy, just sort of living off fumes of it old 80s TV show to survive and only caring about himself to then, you know, becoming this captain and moving forward in this journey and learning to appreciate others, learning that he can't just do it on his own and learning that, uh, you know, saving the galaxy and saving people and, and all that and becoming a better person. For her, Sigourney Weaver's character, Gwen DeMarco, for Gwen, it's she constantly complained about all her role was was eye candy and and repeating the words on the computer, which yeah, that's what it was. But she learns to accept that, and she also proves that she's more than just a pretty face when she helps Jason in the end. So it it works for Alexander Dane. He's a classically classically trained actor who's been done Shakespeare and stuff, and he thinks that this is below him. And he he believes his character is defined by one phrase by Grabtar's hammer. By the sons of Warpan, you shall be avenged. And he hates that, but by the end, he comes full circle. He connects with one of the aliens. And when that alien, Kalik, dies, he says those words. He comes full circle, and he becomes a warrior. Okay, there really isn't one for any other ones, but like Tech Sergeant Chen, played by uh, Fred Kwan, played by Tony Shalhoub, he has confidence issues, and he overcomes those. Tommy Weber... Played by Daryl Mitchell. <clears throat> he just flies the plane. The most well-rounded character in this film is Guy. Played by Sam Rockwell. And he's the one that I see, you know, going through most. Like, they even kind of... Okay, so his whole thing was... He hosted this whole Comic-Con-like thing. Convention. He introduced everyone and everything. And uh, he was on the show in one episode. Episode 81. Where he died because he was a red shirt, basically. He was crewman number six, I think it was. And he died. And no one remembers him. And he's there with talking to them. He's like, I don't remember me, but I was on a show. And it's it's even weirder because he's about the same age as Daryl Mitchell. And Daryl Mitchell, when he was on... Or Tommy, you know. Tommy, when he was on the show, was a little kid. But they're saying that Guy played the character as an adult. And they give him this cheesy little mustache to make him look a little bit older, I think. But, yeah. Uh, he goes all around it. He volunteers himself to go on there. They don't want him to go with it with them, but he does. And then you know, the whole time, he's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I don't have a name. I don't have a name, you know. And he come, you know, and he's like, I'm going to die. And they go to this planet to get a new core, and they follow... The episode 81, he's like, episode 81, why do we gotta do what we do in episode 81? What does it matter, guy? I die in episode 81! You're not gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. You're not gonna die. He doesn't die. And there's even a scene uh, towards the end. This whole thing is around this Omega-13, which the villain, Ceres, wants. And so, eventually they do activate it, but before they do, um... Everybody is being killed. Everybody. Like Jason, Gwen, Tommy. Everyone on the main deck is being killed by Ceres. He's shooting them. 
Guy is the only one that's not killed. And I noticed that this time. I'm like, you know, he's he's the one always afraid of dying. He's the only one that doesn't die in this instance. And then Jason activates the uh, Mega 13 and it rewinds. So he's never going to get that gratification, but he does get gratification because, you know, they all survive, of course, and they get or back to Earth, and the show was rebooted, you know, because it did do things. And Guy is given his own name. So, was it, um... Security, uh, Rock Ingersoll or something like that. He gets a name. He comes full circle. You have the vir now you have the villain, Saris. He's played by uh, Ethan Rain from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, I don't think it's on here, but yeah, I was shocked when I watched Over Harper's video on it. I was like, wait, that's Ethan Rain. Ethan Rain is the bad guy and. Got cool. I never knew that. And it's a fantastic villain. And you got these, the uh, the termites, thermites. Sorry, that's what Jason calls them. The thermites. Enrico Colantoni is their leader. Matt, 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 whatever. He's their leader, and he's a great character. And the scene where Jason has to tell them, tell him that because they're this alien race thinks that they're that, that the. Uh, the old episodes of the show are historical documents. They think everything that happened was real. So the scene where Sarah forces Jason to tell him it was fake. He has to tell him like it's a child because he doesn't understand. We faked. We pretended. We lied. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, you know, he, you know, great scene. And in the end, he's just like, you did not pretend. You are heroes! In the end, you know, like, I don't know if he actually learned that they, you know, they did pretend, but, you know, in the end, he, you know, there were heroes. I do love how he says that, we are the mins, the mites from the cartoon nebula, and we need your help. You know, and then you have, uh, you have okay, there's a relationship there between uh, Fred Kwan and the alien, which leads to my favorite line in the entire movie, where they start making out after he... Uh, get something working whenever they start making out and guys are looking at him and the tentacles come out because they're tentacle aliens and you know and he's like that's not right no and that was ad-libbed by Sam Rockwell actually but it's it's my favorite line in the entire film guys if you don't get it I love this movie I can talk about this forever but uh, is there any negatives well <sighs> my negative is Okay, there's one thing. It's a bit of a nitpick. So at the very end of the movie, they crash a spaceship into this convention hall, right? And they they destroy, they shoot, Sir, you know, Jason shoots Ceres and kills him in front of them, right? And so then right after they take their bow, we're shown there's a new TV show. Was there no repercussions for them crashing into the convention hall? Was there no nothing? And just clapped and treated like heroes, but there was no that to hey, you guys have to pay for that. You know, nothing. You know? Uh and also another thing I just thought about this. The aliens say that they have no home planet. It's been destroyed or whatever. They're the only ones left. And everyone except for Ladiana, who stays with a Missy Pyle's character, stays with Fred. They go off on an, on the other they split the ship and they leave. Where are they going? Where are they gonna go? Just fly around space? Who knows? Uh, any other? There's not really much I can say, really. I love this movie. There's a little bit here and there that, you know, just little nitpicks. I can't really put any negatives on this. I love this movie. Uh, but I'm going to be fair. Uh, what is there any other thing I want to talk about here? Not really. It's, it's a great film. I give it a 9 out of 10. A 9 out of 10. I can't give it a 10 because it's not perfect. There's little things. Justin Long is in it and he's fine. I think, you know, he's he's good. But, like, the whole thing with him is that, oh, he bumped into Jason Nesmith and they switched communicators. So he's got the fake one. And now Justin Long has the real one. And that's just so lucky. That's a little bit of a coincidence that they have someone on Earth to contact. So maybe that's a little bit of a negative. Other than that, gives it a not a 10 for me. So what are your thoughts on Galaxy Quest? Make sure to like, share, and subscribe.
Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. Remember, never give up. Never surrender.